the, the relationship at the moment overall I'd say is poor because whenever we talk to young people about the police there's, there's lots of negative uh, comments about the police. I mean one of, one of the biggest issues is trust with yeah. young people and it's not just with young people it's just with people in general. Mm -hmm. um, we all want to trust people but we all got our guard up yeah. yeah? When, and it's only when you get to know someone that your guard comes down and you start to build that trust and rapport. We need to make time to allow both police and young people to come together, build rapport, build relationship, and then you can start to see some change. Have you been stopped and searched? Yeah. And how did that make you feel? When, I don't know, a bit iffy. Sometimes it's just a bit like annoying, isn't it? Like, I feel like, what's the word? Oh, like targeted. Yeah. And some from like time to time, like if they just come up to me and like in a group of people, it's a bit like, why well, I me? Mean. Yeah. When they go for stop and search, it's like looking for trouble. It's like them looking for trouble. Like they get too like gripsy grips and touchy. Mm. It's like obviously you're gonna get annoyed because you know, who are you? Yeah. So I think they just think sometimes because they wear the uniform, they think they're like superior. We had a lot of police that used to walk on the streets, but we'd play and they'd never bother us. They'll just smile and go about their business. Now, if there's a few kids playing outside, the police walk past them, it's a big thing for them. They'd be eyeballed by the police. They'd be watched like a hawk, even though they're innocent. I've witnessed that just picking my son up from the train station with his friends from the school trip. The police were just, for no reason, Mm. And that's coming back from a school trip. Innocent kids. My daughter, she had left the gym and she was stopped at the bus stop because it's quite packed. And they were asked to do a search on her. But the worst thing is, is she has alopecia. So she had a beanie and a wig on. And where they asked to just pat down, it made her feel like like she was stripped naked. Mm. That was her Did boundary mm -hmm. and they went over it. And even though she explained herself and she's a big girl and we dress a little bit like we've got jeans and je hoodies, but it doesn't mean we're all the same. Mm. What do you guys want to do in the future? That's a good question. Mm -hmm. What workers? Yeah. 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 I want to be a policeman. Oh, cool. Yeah. You want to be a policeman? What appeals to you about being a policeman? Mm, I don't know, just like helping run them be better. Is there anything that you think is unfair? Anything that you think? Uh, yeah, sometimes like randomly you could get stopped by the police depending mm -hmm. on what you're wearing and mm -hmm. what you look like. So, you being a police officer, you wouldn't do that? You I would, would search people, but like, not just because of what they're wearing or what they look like. Mm. Police officers should be in areas where we need it instead of like, because um, there's certain areas where the police officers are just roaming around. Yeah. But then there's areas where there's crimes happening, there's burglaries and mm -hmm. stuff like that where they could be. I feel like that needs to happen and I feel like um, they need to have more cameras. Um, I grew up in Brixton. Mm -hmm. For me, it was similar to Jeff as well. Um, growing up, everyone was together. We had a lot of community centres that we'd go to. There was a lot of activities. Um, we definitely had a lot of role models when I was yeah. growing up. People that we looked up to that actually was um, directing us in the right path, mm. even though there was a lot of negative going on um we still had those people that we could look up to and say okay cool this is going on but this is the right way to go about certain things the change from then to now there's no community yeah none whatsoever yeah. and i see that even yeah there's a massive change there's no community at all no direction mm. a lot of the kids are lost For us, um, Core in One project has been excellent. I've sort of had some involvement in it over sort of the last 
sort of 12 months involved in a lot of steering groups, working closely with young people as we're working to sort of try and develop a um, youth advisory group, which I know is very much a priority for the Met Police going forward. Um, well, I'd say they certainly could be better, um, but you do get a very mixed review. So there's sometimes you, you talk to some of the youngsters and they're very receptive, they're happy that you're happy to stop and talk to them, um, ask them about their, their lives and what's going on. But you do also get quite negative reviews, completely blank us, blank don't want to talk to us, don't want to engage with us. Um, so it's a, they're, they're the barriers we're trying to break down. So I think it's about us, as much as breaking down those barriers, but for the Met Police to re-engage with young people and to better understand, you know, what life is like for them living in Croydon. In a year's time, I'd like to hope that we've built sort of a stronger foundation around, you know, uh, connection with young people. Um, continue to have an open and honest dialogue with young people in Croydon. Um, you know, having those strong two-way conversations so we can better understand what life is like living in Croydon as a young person.